Excuse Council me. President, we're on the record. Okay. Council Agenda, Township of Precipity, Troy Hills, Township Council Agenda meeting of November 8th, 2018. Oh. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in accordance with the requirements of the open public meetings law by filing the notice in the office of the township clerk and by posting the meeting notice on the bulletin board at the municipal building and on the municipal website on December 20th, 2017, where it has remained posted since that date. A legal notice appeared in the Daily Record and the Newark Star Ledger on December 27th, 2017, and was forwarded by fax to other local newspapers on December 20th, 2017. Council meetings are videotaped and aired on Public Access 21 at 7 p.m. Sundays and Wednesdays and are also available for viewing at www.parsippany.net. Okay, please rise for flag salute. Mr. DePiro, if you would. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. <coughs> Mr. DePiro? Here. Miss, I'm sorry, Mr. DePiro, Miss Grignani? Present. Miss McCarthy? Here. Miss Peterson? Here. Mr. Cariffi? Here. Also in attendance, our township attorney, uh, Jim Lott, uh, the business administrator, uh, Keith Kazmark, the other business administrator, <laughs> Alan Sandman, and the township clerk, Khaled Madden, a council president. We have a quorum. You may begin. Thank you. Upcoming meetings, November 20th, 2018, 7.30 p.m. regular meeting. December 4th, 2018, 7.30 p.m. agenda meeting. Approval of minutes. Just uh, for the record, the minutes were circulated to the council for review, I believe, on Monday. So, um, so I entertain okay. a motion to mm -hmm. approve those minutes. Motion. Second, Grignani. Motion made by Ms. Peterson, seconded by Ms. Grignani. Roll call, Mr. DePiro? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Cariffi? Yes. Motion passes. Closed session resolution, whereas the Open Public Meetings Act, PL 1975, Chapter 231, permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting in certain circumstances, and whereas the Township Council is of the opinion that such circumstances presently exist, and whereas the Township Council wishes to discuss contract negotiations and attorney-client privilege, and whereas minutes will be kept and once the matter involving the confidentiality of the above no longer requires confidentiality, the minutes can be made public. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Township Council of the Township of Parsippany Troy Hills that the public be excluded from this meeting. Motion to adjourn. Uh, sorry, motion to adjourn into closed session. Second. A uh, motion made by Ms. Peterson, seconded by Ms. Uh, McCarthy. Roll call. <coughs> Mr. DiPiro? Uh, let me first state that I object to having meetings like this, but um, when, when we should be having a regular township council meeting. We should have had the special meeting beforehand that was tentatively scheduled, um, and then go into our regular meeting, or our closed session should be at the end of our regular meeting. I really object to interrupting the, the normal way we have council meetings. In the future, I wish we would not do that. Objection has been noted for the record. And it's a, a yes for closed session, right, Mr. DePiro? Yes, for closed session. Right. This uh, time. You got it. <laughs> uh, Ms. Grignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Cariffi? Yes. Okay, motion passes. We will now adjourn into closed session and we will be returning no later than 8.30. And I'll just note for the record that the closed session regarding uh, regards the Stanbury Tax Abatement Agreement. We are back on the record. Entertain a motion to reconvene? Motion. Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion made by uh, Ms. Peterson, uh, seconded by uh, Mr. DePiro. Roll call. Mr. Uh, DePiro? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Cariffi? Yes. We are back into open session. Thank you. Okay, presentations, reports, Township Council, anything? Uh, I have nothing, Mr. President. Not at this time. Can I just say um, my voting experience was wonderful and I want to thank all of the people who volunteered their time and participated in that and 
it was just straightforward and we didn't have any problems and I was very happy. And the clerk for uh, yeah. taking, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and, the, and the clerk, yes, I'm thank totally you. kidding. <laughs> you're here to the clerk. I heard about yeah. a lot of problems the clerk in other and places, his staff did an that. excellent job. Yes, yeah, it's it really, a, just to say, it's really all my staff. They're the best. I just kind of sit there and wear a suit and just go around and say, I don't do anything else. Just good really, they, they really do a really good job. They, they I really have to give them all the credit for that, so I can't take the credit. All right, thank you. Okay, business administrator, presentation of Fire District 1, new construction building with ambulance <coughs> bay. Just want to, uh, uh, just want to note that um, with the Township Council, uh, we, in the interest mm -hmm. of moving the meeting, we would just like if mm -hmm. all presentations mm -hmm. could be kept to a 10-minute time limit, would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Prior to uh, going into that first one, I'm going to turn it over to the, the my counterpart, BA, <laughs> um, the male version, and uh, he's going to address one of the other topics that we said we would talk about this evening. So through your council president, uh, we convened an executive session this evening to discuss the uh, Stanbury project. I know there were questions that have been raised at prior council meetings relative to the Board of Education and the impact of that project. Uh, so the council has asked that uh, Mr. Hanley from NW Financial uh, come forward this evening under the administrative report uh, to address those specific concerns. So I'll turn it over to Michael. Nope. Nope. Just, you got to turn it on there. Is it on? Mike Hanley, NW Financial. Um, I was asked by the administration to take a look at a letter that was written as it related to school children and why this you project to, would be, um, at why it would compare differently to Powder Mill, which was a project that was discussed in the letter. And the, there, there are a couple features of this project that make it very different. The first one is unit size. The unit sizes are nearly double in powder mill when you compare the square footage of the one bedrooms and the two bedrooms. They're basically twice as big in the powder mill project. The powder mill project was also built in 1993. This will be a new project. And the unit count is very different. The unit count of the powder mill project is 75% two bedrooms whereas this project has 63% one bedrooms and studios. And Rutgers has studied thousands of units throughout the state, uh, both in the past and recently. And unit type, units of this type produce very few school children. And the, the basis of the projection was, in fact, the Rutgers report. Um, a second item that was mentioned in the letter was the cost of education that we were using as an estimate was $10,000 rather than the total cost of education, which is in the $20,000 range. That number is based on reporting that the state does. Each school board sends their budget to the state. So the number that we're reflecting is the cost of classroom instruction because many costs are fixed in a school board budget. They're cost of administration, creating curriculum, et cetera, don't go up by putting a new student in the chair. So it's a common practice to use classroom instruction number rather than the total number because the total number significantly overstates the cost of adding a child to a school. Um, Oh, and the, the last question was, why don't we just tell the developer to make less money? And as we discussed at the last meeting when we gave the full presentation, this process has gone on for a couple of years now. And this, the return in this project is what is commercially acceptable. If we were to ask them 
to take a lower return, they would not be able to finance the project and it would not go forward. And that's consistent with exactly the way the EDA deals with their incentives. You have to determine what is a bankable rate of return and this would be on the lower end of what EDA accepts at the state level in order to incent the project to be built. And that's why the long-term tax exemption law exists because there are projects that can't be built without financial assistance from the municipality. Thank you. Before, All right, now we're going to yeah. move on to the uh, presentation um, by no, Fire. No, I'm sorry. Um, before, before um, first, um, any questions by, you know, Council, if you have any, any questions. And secondly, um, we're, uh, we're recommending that I know that um, uh, Mr. Venezia, as well as other uh, people, may want to have some uh, additional information from uh, Mike because our, uh, he's graciously said that he would remain and have some conversation. So um, that that's my understanding. Is right, that great. correct? So yeah. So yeah. if anybody has any questions, Mr. Hanley, you can ask him. He'll be, he'll be here. You can go up to him, ask him, or you can ask him during the public session if you'd like. So whichever is easier for you guys. All right. Now back to, to the, um, the 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 agenda that's printed. Um, it is my um, pleasure uh, to introduce the um, district fire district one. Um, I've had um, many a meeting, and and uh, <coughs> it's a great project. Um, I I was going to turn it over to Janice, who was at the planning board meeting for the courtesy review, and uh, I think she could pretty much uh, give you chapter and verse. But I wouldn't do that to you, Janice. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. <laughs> but you could handle it. She could handle it. So if uh, Jeff and uh, Jim, or uh, come up, and uh, Dean Dean is here because, as you know, this project that most of you are familiar with, maybe the one person would be Emily that will be learning uh, some additional information uh, with this. Um, the beauty of the project is that it um, services the fire district as well as uh, a need to house and have office space for our ambulance service and that is why Dean is here um, and he has been one of the other people very instrumental in working. It's been a great cooperative effort. Um, one of the things that they'll talk about, or the few things that they'll talk about, and, and I don't want to go in on their time, um, is the project itself and what the concept was. Um, uh, Mr. Lott, uh, our attorney, is working on <coughs> the financial aspects of uh, the, uh, the utilization of the space by the ambulance service. So um, what manner and shape that will take is not for you fellas to talk to, but you saw my email back to you addressing the concept is still the same as far as the financial but for tonight's meeting uh, discussion it's to talk about the project and that there was over the last um, what couple of years now because we had such a great working relationship with the DCA not um, you know it took us a little time <laughs> those of you in the audience who uh, have had that experience know what I talk I'm speaking of Jeff uh, before you yes. go, uh, Khaled, yes. uh, if, if they were to put those drawings on that bench, could you focus that camera down onto it? Yes, Is I can. Is that possible? I, I, I wouldn't be able to focus it, but I can definitely view that camera. There's no question Well, I was that. just thinking, in, in, uh, for the sake of the video, Absolutely. Uh, rather than have the video stare at us all this time, you know, well, they, have they would have something help. better to look at. Yeah. I don't know about better, but okay, I agree with you. Is yeah, that camera already they're pointing? Uh, yeah, yeah we just hit a button. The and audience it goes can see it then, too. Pretty fancy, right? Wow. Has it been pointing that way? The blue, the round one is pointing at you guys. Oh, I thought it was the other. The round one is pointing at you, and the other one is pointing aim at you. Towards the, aim it towards the camera, though, so they, so they can get the camera on it. Yeah. Facebook. Or Instagram. Okay. Yes. <laughs> oh, we need to see. We need to see yeah, it too. Collect, <laughs> collect. We're gonna want to see. We, we, we want to see it too. Yeah. A little bit. Well, a little bit. All right. All right. All right. All right. Now, well, you <laughs> Okay, what I'm going to suggest is maybe, you know, when they used to have the fights and the, the girl used to go around with round one, um, I, I, I think uh, we, we have a volunteer here who'd be happy to do that. That's great. 
No, I was kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm Jeff Berry. I'm 22 Moraine Road, Glacier Hill section of town. Jim Masker, Paul Eisenberg, uh, two of my associate board members. Um, we're here. It's been a long road, almost two years, I think, since we did this once before, uh, with a concept and an idea. Um, and I believe we actually walked away with hearing the word visionary. So uh, thank you for that. And we, we feel like we pulled it off. Um, we made it. I won't bore you with the details because I've got 10 minutes. I had an hour prepared, but <laughs> <laughs> um, we made it through the state after multiple revisions. They're happy. We're happy. Um, we really feel like this, this building can serve us in this community um, for another 100 years the way the way uh, the first one has. Um, the biggest piece of this that I feel that I'm most proud of is the shared service aspect that we managed mm -hmm. to, to put together. It's, um, to me, it's what, th what the state has been screaming for and, and I feel like we actually pulled it off and we're really looking forward to the relationship, the working relationship that we're gonna have with, with fire and EMS together, but, but fire and the town together. Um, so if you can see, we're, we have two bays onto Route 53, two bays onto Tarn Drive, similar, mm -hmm. similar stance as the existing building, only larger. And then hidden behind where that fire truck is, that would be the, uh, the paid ambulance bay and their office and their crew area. Um, completely attached yet separate, you know, for, for um, specific reasons, you know, that there has to be separation. But, um, you know, we're really, we really feel like we've accomplished what we needed to accomplish in the design of this building. Um, you can see uh, floor plans of the, of the first floor to the left with the truck layout. And then Paul just point to the ambulance area again just so they can kind of see it up there. Uh, That's where your building is now, isn't it? Correct. You're going to tear it down? Or so or it's going to have to come completely down, and it will be built on nearly all of the buildable footprint Same of that footprint. lot. Now, we were, as another piece of this whole project, with, uh, with the help of the town and a, and a piece of property that, was, that we held a deed restriction to, yes. we were able to actually uh, transfer the ownership of that property in, 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 in a way to inject private funds into this project and that builder bought the property behind the firehouse which will now be part of this whole project we were fortunate enough to have a family that was willing to move to help us and with the help of the of the private funds they were able to move out and that property is now going to be uh, added to this you can't see it in this in the photos but it's basically the the low setted low setting house behind the firehouse um, which ultimately was going to become our parking lot, for, for lack of a better term. Uh, so the two properties combined will allow that building to be put in place. Uh, one more facet of this is how do we operate as a fire department? In the meantime. In the meantime. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're fortunate enough to, we're fortunate enough to have three fire stations, two hour um, care. Since an avenue in Montana, which You're good. Am I still good? Um, because of manpower issues, but fortunately, manpower is picked up. We're going to have two vehicles in that station again. Um, hasn't been like that in a long time. Very tight fit because they don't make them like they used to. Um, we also have powder mill, which is housed uh, pretty, pretty, pretty uh, full right now with an aerial, um, a, an engine, and a brand new engine that we just took delivery of which was part of the whole bond project for this uh, that did just arrive and we've been sharing space with uh, Dean's crew up there um, which has been great so the last piece is we we looked at a, a various locations sharing firehouses with district 3 district 2 uh, we've looked all over the place try to make some vehicles fit and what we came up with was a temporary structure to two bay um, yeah, it's a steel structure. It's you know it has uh, engineered drawings. It's it's going to be uh, installed. Uh, we have an agreement with Smith Klein Beecham uh, to use a piece of their uh, asphalted property near the barn. If you're familiar with the property, um, the historic barn that's down there, 
Uh, we're going to share uh, that parking lot, uh, borrow some power from that building, and we'll be able to store two vehicles down there, an engine probably in a rescue. And uh, that's going to be our home base for hopefully no more than 12 months. Um, it's going to shift the way we, we, uh, we respond, but our guys will figure it out. Uh, we're, we're good like that. So um, that's all been submitted with the package. We made it through Board of Adjustments with it. They understand the scope and the project and the building and, and uh, everything like that. So in a nutshell, you know, like I said, we were here two years ago, and I felt like it was a favorable uh, outlook towards this, and I, and I can only hope that we're, we're still on that course. Um, I would just like to add, when you talked about the shared services being a great element of that, it, it is. And one of the other parts of it, although they're saying that you would be encapsulated in your own area, um, the uh, fire district is truly a shared um, entity that said um, the utilization of the upper floors would be certainly uh, for certainly the ambulance squad, if not the community at large. They, you um, go this goes back to a, yep. a public building again. Yep. Um, Shared services, shared use of the room. I know we've hosted um, some police initiatives out of that building, some training seminars. Um, you know, we talked about this a long time ago when, uh, during the hurricane, when Hiawatha had flooded. You know, it didn't make sense to move Lower Hiawatha to the Hiawatha Firehouse because you were moving them from low ground to a couple feet higher. Get them on the other side of town. Get them out of the way. This will be something that we can utilize that for. Uh, I feel like the building's large enough for that. I uh, One other key component, you know, really getting the stars and the planets to line up. The original firehouse on Route 53 in Tarn Drive was not owned by the town or by the commissioners. That was owned by the Mount Tabor Volunteer Fire Department, um, organized in 1910. They took a huge leap of faith with us and basically surrendered their building for a dollar as long as we could get this whole package to come together for them. So, and then with that, they have a forever home, uh, you know, the typical 99-year lease um, upstairs of the buildings where they can stay in perpetuity um, with this project. Um, again, between the, uh, the neighbors letting, you know, wanting to move, the fire department giving up their building, uh, the option for shared services, the private uh, funds that were injected into the project, I feel like, uh, done everything's here um, there's Hi. only uh, two things that I would like to mention um, there was a gentleman by the name of we'll just call him Joe that was very concerned about the fact that being a, a an old timer or a long timer and a volunteer I would I would just like to make a recommendation you, you talked about that there was a monument there um, I think it would be great if um, there was some type of another plaque put there in memory of all the people that built that and you know, and make Joe somewhat happy that you know there was some kind of a doc, uh, some kind of a um, sign that says, "Hey, you know, w we you're here because never forgot." Yes, we have a couple yeah. of plans. We yeah. have a couple of ideas to save a piece, uh, something nostalgic of the building. Because um, he was very passionate that. that night. No, he he was, and and the one thing I really wanted to impress on Joe. <clears throat> as a young as a young member joining joining uh, almost 30 years ago watching the older guys not come to meetings anymore because we have no elevator and you know you tell a guy like Dick Chambers or Frank Sherbo like we'll carry you up the stairs and you can come to the meeting they're saying Semper Fi <laughs> <laughs> you're not carrying me up the stairs <laughs> so they just never came again yeah. so we would le lose a guy 10 years too soon that's great. Joe, God love him, yeah. you know, yeah. isn't going to make those stairs forever. The, the elevator that's in this building is going to let us keep those guys Good. near. So. And the last thing I would just like to comment is um, I, I broached it earlier, and you talked about the finance part of it. Um, the, the council, for, for the most part, is aware that um, there is some financial uh, responsibility or arrangement that will be forthcoming um, after um, the uh, the uh, in the new attorney will say you know Jim took a look at it there was some question as to um, what format it would take so um, that will be coming uh, back shortly after um, Jim has an opportunity to work on that we're, in, uh, we're encouraged by whatever format it needs to take yeah. place but right. 
um, I really think it's it's going to yeah. be a great home for years to come. Yeah. If if, yeah. if I may, and respecting Khaled's request for ten minutes, yeah. if you'll indulge me. Um, if we could just have Dean speak uh, for a few minutes about the advantages to this project for, for his division, especially the housing of the ambulance and also the geography uh, relative to response time. Because yeah, we like Dean, we'll give him an additional few You guys minutes. missed me. I used to talk a lot in here about <laughs> stuff, and now I'm back. So I'll keep my hour down, too. Uh, thank you for having us uh, and indulging us and in, in listening to what we have to say. Uh, back in 2013, sorry, this interferes, but turn that off. Back in 2013, uh, kind of on a whim, I met with the fire chief from Mount Tabor and said, you know, I'm looking at response times and we all know how big and crazy this town gets trying to get from Lake Hiawatha to, you know, the police and fire academy or putting stone in that area up there. I said, you know, one of the things I think we could do is maybe we can station one of the ambulances during those peak hours just as a pilot program at your powder mill firehouse, <coughs> because then with that aspect of it, uh, we didn't interfere with their main fire operations because that fire station wasn't as busy and it gave us a place to have the ambulance in the garage, some office space, uh, uh, office space, restrooms, etc. cetera. Uh, long story short, that relationship has divulged that station being staffed by EMS uh, with one ambulance essentially 24 hours a day, seven days a week now. So our response times have gone from 14 minutes to eight or nine minutes, depending on where the call is and weather and traffic and you know the level of acuity of the emergency. Uh, with the Route 53 station, that geography is kind of a home run for us because we can go left or right out of the parking lot. We're right up Brooklawn Drive, right up Park Road, up to Route 80 in Denville if need be, but right back down to Speedwell Ave or Route 10, Tabor Road, wherever we need to be. And with this, again, it brings that modernization aspect, the security aspect of the ambulance being secured inside, you know, key fobs, swipe cards to get in and out, and everything will be secure. So again, that vision of what can we do now and where can we go? And I will tell you that when we first started working with the fire department and the fire commissioners in 2013, I didn't think we'd be standing here tonight talking about a new state of the art building. So uh, things are definitely lining up with it. And, uh, you know, Parsippany is a big town. We're a great town because we have a lot of services for our residents. And one of the hardest things to do is figure out the best way to provide that service with considering, okay, it's Monday. Monday at two o'clock is crazier than Saturday at two o'clock, but at Saturday at two o'clock on the holidays, you have to account for this traffic, these different uh, recreational activities or whatever's going on. So uh, having that ambulance footprint always in the fire district one area, or I like to call it the route 10 corridor to keep it simple or Mount Tabor area. Uh, I think, you know, again, going with the concept of now and looking at the future is, a, is kind of a home run for everybody from the public safety side and our operational side for, uh, you know, time to come. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Any questions from any of the council members? I just wanted to say that again, and I mentioned this at the planning board meeting, that, you know, I did visit the firehouse on Route 53, and it, it's a very cramped. They're, they're, the, the equipment is, is more, they have more equipment. The trucks are bigger. They have such a small space to get dressed in. And I think for the job that they do and the risks that they take, this is uh, this needs to be done for them. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's definitely outdated. I mean, yeah. They, they need a new one. I want to thank you guys for everything that you did and everything yes. that you put together and, and working together. I mean, this was a really good thing, and I'm, I'm really glad that this is moving forward. My compliments to everybody who yes. helped make it work. We probably all took a turn um, getting ready to throw on the towel one at a time, each one of the f five of us on our board. And, uh, you know, Jim would pull me back up, and then he would want to jump off the ledge two months later, and finally we're here. I'm only sad to say that we are going to lose Paul after his term ends this fall, so he will, uh, uh, he's going to retire and uh, head to Florida, but uh, couldn't have done it without him. And uh, I want to thank you for that. And, yeah, th and yeah. thank you. Can I tell you, can I tell you a quick story? I have all night. There, there was yeah. a <laughs> 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 10 minutes. 30 seconds. There was oh, 30 seconds. I love Paul. I don't, I don't get three minutes. <laughs> 30 seconds. <laughs> there was uh, a fundraiser there up, up on the second floor. And, and a friend of mine uh, went over to support the fundraiser. And he said, I have to walk up all those stairs? I said, no, no, take the elevator. So I went up, I had, I had breakfast or whatever it was up there, you know, and about 20 minutes later. <laughs> He's still he looking up. for the elevator. No, well, wait. I know. He's still looking for it. Um. I, I thought he knew I was kidding. 
yeah, that, that's that's that, that's our mic. I, w I would just like to say that um, thank you for uh, passing out, you know, doing that. Um, I know you have the legs for it too, so um, you did a very nice job in showing all the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. 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 Okay, moving on, we have a presentation from Habitat for Humanity regarding yep. Henry Street. Yes. Um, Blair, I'll have you introduce your group and uh, for discussion. Thank you. Uh, I will say this, that the documentation um, that was put together um, was submitted to uh, the council in, in various forms. So um, I think they're somewhat familiar with it, but um, it's nice to hear it. and. Uh, yeah. We're, we're very happy to be here and thank you very much. My name is Blair Schleicher Bravo and I'm the CEO for Mars Habitat for Humanity. I'm going to give you just a little overview of Habitat, that's my job, and introduce you to my uh, COO, Liz DeCourcy, who will give you an overview of the project. Uh, but it's always good to know why we're here really fundamentally and that's because we're Habitat for Humanity. We have a vision where we feel everyone in the world should have a, de a decent place to live. And so we operate with that vision. Our mission is that we bring people together to build homes, communities, and hope. So, so we go to and we work in municipalities in, a, in the area with this uh, in mind. We are an inclusionary housing ministry. We were founded in 1985. We are an affiliate of Habit Habitat for Humanity International. Uh, and we have served nearly 500 families in our 30 plus years. Uh, we build new homes, we repair, we rehab, uh, and we do international home building. We have sheltered more than 4,000 people. And so why do we build? We build because there's a need in Mars County, in New Jersey, and in the world. Uh, so our Habitat families are selected based on three criteria. The need, the ability to pay a mortgage, and in our case, it's a zero interest loan, 30 year fixed, and a willingness to partner with Habitat, which means that they do sweat equity. Uh, that's in lieu of a down payment. They build their homes, spending about 300 hours to build those homes of their, their home or other homes. Uh, and they, so they volunteer to, and they know, they know where every nail is. Uh, we sell the homes. We don't give homes away. We sell them to the selected families, and then they will repay the mortgage back to us. We hold the mortgage, and they pay property taxes. These are all the top questions that people ask. We sell the homes, we don't give them away, and we select people based on this criteria. It's a very rigorous program. Our families have to go through home ownership education, and they partner with us for a year or more, depending on how long the project is. And to give you an idea of what the income guidelines are, for 2018, for a family of two, uh, it's 32000 uh, $32,000 a year is the annual income. For up to a family of five, it's $72,000 a year. So we're working with people that are right here in our communities. Uh, a couple of examples of some folks that we're working with. A school secretary making about $32,000 a year. Um, your maintenance workers making about $40,000 a year. Uh, municipal employees, about $45,000 a year. Um, I live in another town and I know sometimes we have to put our DPW up when there's a snowstorm in a local motel because they don't live near us. So we're, what we try to do is help our, our workers, people who we need, people we love to live right here in our communities. And we also do this because decent, affordable housing improves health, improves learning opportunities, increases earning potential, and it strengthens our communities. This is why we do our work, and s many studies have shown this. Our, our own families have shown this. We also, and what we're doing here with Persephone, is we work with municipalities as a solution to their affordable housing uh, obligation. We build beautifully designed con and constructed homes. 
All of our homes are Energy Star certified and we use green building standards and sustainable materials whenever feasible. We have built 22 multifamily projects, 30 single family projects, and 17 rehabs. We, have w we work in our service area is Morris County. We have worked in 16 municipalities in Morris County, helping those municipalities with their obligation. We've built in 21 municipalities total in, the, in, in five counties, so in northern New Jersey. Uh, and we do have a single family home right here in Precipity, uh, Habitat Home in Lake Hiawatha. Uh, so that's a little bit of a background uh, to give a basis for uh, why we're here and why we build. I'd like to introduce to you uh, Liz DeCourcy. Hello. Thank you. Uh, Liz DeCourcy. I'm the Chief Operating Officer with Morris Habitat. Um, we were contacted by the municipality and New Bridge Associates regarding the property on Henry Street uh, about February earlier this year. And we had several meetings with all parties to discuss if Mars Habitat would be able to take over the project since it had been sitting undeveloped, um, although it had been approved for five years. And Newbridge was in a, a potential problem they're having because they were paying taxes and they couldn't get the project built. So they invited us in to talk to them and we came to terms between the attorneys with the municipality, Newbridge and ourselves to make sure that all parties were made whole, that the agreement that Newbridge had with the municipality for the COA obligation uh, would still be satisfied. So we made some presentations with, uh, to Ellen and other representatives of the municipality with a variety of concepts to see what would f fit best on the property, and a 12-unit project was selected. So we did enter into the contract with Newbridge in July, and since then, we had um, undertaken our due diligence activities, uh, which we just finished recently. We, in September, spoke to some of the neighbors and had invited them in to help us with the design before we go to the zoning board, uh, with the hopes that we'd be able to satisfy any concerns that they might have on the project. Um, our project, as, it, as now, and you probably received some of the concepts in your packet, um, is three fourplexes which we would position um, strategically on the property to try to um, minimize large uh, buildings when you come down Henry Street. And we have our architect and engineer that will show you those. Um, the design includes, as I said, three fourplexes. It would be a total of six two-bedroom units and six three-bedroom units, which conform to COA or UHAC requirements. And um, we are just now starting the design of the concepts which we gave you to to review but again we're going to have to go in front of the zoning board get all the typical you know approvals and input from everyone um, the will be built as modular construction so we're anticipating um, about a 12 to 16 month time frame uh, for the construction once we get approvals and I'd like to introduce our engineer Eric Keller um, council president is now at should we wait till the end for questions? Yeah, okay. wait till the end. Good evening, everyone. I'm Eric Keller with Bowman Consulting. Um, some of you may know us better as Omelin Engineering, but we haven't been that for a couple of years. Um, we've been working on this project. We started with Newbridge. We did a couple of different designs, got approval for uh, a project for Newbridge. And unfortunately, that has not progressed. Um, when Mars Habitat started to have these discussions with Parsippany, uh, they brought us into this, one, because we're familiar with the project, and two, because I've helped them out over the years uh, on different projects. Um, and you know, I'd like to continue those, those efforts to help uh, Habitat bring affordable housing to uh, to Parsippany and to other communities. So we looked at a number of different uh, designs for this site um, using buildings that Habitat has already built in other communities within Morris County. Um, and we've looked at single family, we've looked at two sixplexes, we've looked at uh, uh, fiveplexes, and you know, 
recognizing the area that we're in with single family homes around the uh, site. And we wanted to go with something that's in keeping with those single family homes, but recognizing the fact that you need to build something that's affordable. So we don't have garages for this, um, which adds cost and, and but doesn't bring anything more to that. Um, the property is relatively flat, it slopes. Uh, Park Road is just up to the north of this, which is the top of the page. It slopes from north to, th to south. Um, so we, we have two different layouts that we started to look at. One, all with, both with three buildings, um, and looking at different alignments as to how this could be done to buffer uh, and to provide some uh, screening from adjacent properties. Uh, this property has, it's about an acre in size. It has a house on it that is old. It is not in good shape. Um, really is not suitable for rehabilitation. Um, and it would be an underutilization of the, of the property. The zoning for this area is 15,000 square foot lots. So from a size perspective, it could be developed into th three lots, but with the, with the uh, street frontage, um, that would take some variances. But we want to look at this to keep it in the context of a single family neighborhood, but provide a number of homes for, uh, for potential residents. So um, <clears throat> it has frontage on Henry Street, which right now comes down and basically ends at the property and turns into a driveway uh, that would be extended. Um, and the access would still continue on Henry Street at the Park Road. Um, there is no water and sewer at the property today. Um, but when we designed this for the prior use for Newbridge, we were extending, there are sewer and water on Lane Street. We can bring those over um, and provide public water and sewer for the property. It's essentially designed. We don't really have to change the design. We have to do it internally. Um, but we've kept uh, with this plan larger buffers uh, to the adjacent properties than what would be permitted under an R, under a confirming single family home. So you know, that's kind of the concept. They're a two story building, very residential in character. Uh, the architect has placed some porches on here. Um, so while it accommodates four families, it is resident, you know, single family in character. So. You had a question? Uh, I have, now I have two questions. Do you have any elevation drawings with you? No, not at this point. Okay. Um, and it was mentioned that you communicated with the neighbors to see if you could get their support. How did that go? Not too good. Well, no, don't half. Okay, half. Go ahead. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Answer, answer that question. question. Okay. Um, they contacted me just to find out some of the history um, on several occasions, and I provided them history on the COA, the use of the property. That money was already spent from the trust funds to purchase the property and, and for, by Newbridge. And they were interested at that point trying to um, purchase it. And I said, I don't think that would be permitted because of the funding that's already gone into it. So I did explain to them that I understand their you know apprehension with change and something else coming in but the best I could do was to invite them in to help us with the design so rather to have to deal with it after the zoning board assuming we get approval to come in on the front end and and tell us what your concerns are and let us see uh, what we could do they one gentleman was more receptive to being at least kept in the loop um, the other gentleman was not so um, but we will, you know, still try and continue to work with them. And when I first spoke to Ellen back in February, she said when Newbridge had come in, it was very helpful to have brochures. Um, so they wouldn't have to actually go through all the plans, but if we wanted like answer questions about the, prog the, the program and how we select families and how we build the project. So we're intending to do that as well as try and reach out to them. Um. 
right, and our architect, Seth Lieb, um, did do some design work for the project. We just didn't um, have any elevations prepared. And as you're coming up, one of the things that was also made cl clear to the neighbor neighbors, and I know you met numerous times, was that you know they still have to go through the rigor of the board of board of adjustment, and we you know, the council mentioned that at at the, uh, the last meeting when when some of the neighbor neighbors had come out. Um, that's why I took um, time and made sure that you got all the elements because, as you know, this has been part of and was discussed not only in closed session to talk about our core obligation and how we were going to meet it back in uh, August and September, but um, all, all along during that time, as you said, we've talked about this since February. Um, it is part of the master, I mean, the uh, spending plan and, and was approved. Good evening. I'm Seth Lieb from Seth A. Lieb, AIA architect located in Parsippany. And can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I've worked on the preliminary design of this. As uh, Eric had mentioned, um, we're going, and also Liz DeCourcy had mentioned, it's going to have six three bedroom units and six two bedroom units. It's going to have a residential, very residential, almost single family character, it has front porches, it has one, each entrance. Um, which is typical for uh, a project like this. We have uh, three entrances, so that uh, um, two entrances uh, on the first floor for the two first floor units, and then there's two more units on the second floor. Sometimes we do it as four entrances, sometimes we do it as three entrances. This particular one, at this preliminary stage, we have it as three entrances, so that the, there's a center entrance, and the center entrance leads up to the two different uh, uh, units on the second floor. So it's a, a common stair, but sometimes we do separate stairs. It's in 100% finalized yet. The other thing is, uh, as Eric mentioned, so there's a, a, a front porch on each one. The, it, the idea is that these are single family home ownership, uh, as was explained. So they have single, they have identity to themselves. It's not looking like a very, you know, like a railroad car or anything. This has a lot of character, a lot of charm. It has hip roofs, it has some gables. Um, it has, you know, different, facets to it so it's very three-dimensional it's not a flat facade um, and you can see that even in this preliminary scheme where it has the different bumps and the different openings and in this scheme a little bit more than the other scheme it also um, really gives a sense of front and identity to the street um, so that the narrowest part just like a house a lot of times has the narrow part as opposed to seeing the breadth of it um, facing the street, and it relates more to the backyards uh, and the particular property surrounding this one. How many parking spots are there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many? Yeah. How many? How many parking? Which, which uh, meets the RSIS requirements and uh, <coughs> residential site approval. How many unit? How many per unit? Then is I'm that sorry. If he's going to answer yeah. questions, he's yeah. got to yeah. speak into the mic. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. Um, We've treated these, even though they're not townhomes or they're uh, flats, they're over. To be conservative, we've used 2.3 spaces per unit for the two bedroom units, 2.4 spaces per uh, unit for the three bedroom. Uh, three bedrooms. Do we have <coughs> has to be that many? Um, we can probably trim that down. I mean, our experience with Habitat is that we're usually being asked to put in a few more. If we treat these under the, the state regulations, you treat, you have townhouses and you have garden apartments. The terms don't really fit. Um, but if you treat them as uh, flats, then it's two spaces for a two bedroom unit and 2.1 spaces for a, a three bedroom unit. So you're looking at, you know, roughly three less spaces three or four so yeah, uh, fine. minimal yeah um, and we've you know we've arranged it so that we can buffer those areas so that they're you know we don't have a lot of visibility of those to the street um, uh, and, and gives us an opportunity to buffer them we also have to obviously deal with the stormwater regulations and provide detention which we had already designed for the prior design layout for uh, Newbridge. Thank you. Thank you. I want to just add just a couple more things. Um, the, the other thing, as I said, they have front porches. 
So also to differentiate the different units and the different entrances, it's not a symmetrical approach. It's a very asymmetrical approach. So by that I mean that the front porch on one end does not look like the front porch on the other end. So when you look at it, you wouldn't know, uh, the perception is that you're not looking at a multifamily dwelling. You're looking at a house uh, that has different elements and maybe a second entrance. So that, that's kind of, and we've done this approach before uh, on uh, six unit buildings. It really has, it fits more into the residential character uh, so that it really doesn't look like you're looking at right side and left side in a mirror image. It's very different, yet we are able to accomplish uh, the multiple units <coughs> on the different levels. And the same thing, you know, upstairs. What's happening upstairs doesn't look like a mirror image per se, often of what's going on downstairs to give it more residential character. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Oh, go ahead. Excuse me. Am I to understand that the the architectural finalization has not been done? No. So we could possibly, if the residents that are living on Henry Street uh, participate, um, you would possibly oh, make this more of a colonial type look. You're talking about gables and absolutely. so forth and so on. You know, the, the residential character, you know, I'll just give an example. If uh, a similar project was uh, going on or a similar development in Marstown, it's not necessarily the appropriate character for Parsippany on Henry Street. So yes, the input from the neighbors were we on all our projects. We welcome that and we can engage in and make it participatory to make it work for the, for the development. Well, I'll just ask Blair, uh, how many residents did participate? How many residents participated? With you, with, with talking? Uh, uh, only, oh. We have, okay, we have three residences, three, three residents um, that have signed this letter with Mr. Bars, B A H R S. Yes, I don't know whether yes, I'm pronouncing Yes, uh, I've only seen the letter, and I know Liz has talked to uh, at least one member. We're in the very preliminary stage. This is uh, a concept, and we would certainly welcome sitting down to, in fact, what we would do is go to a local, can we, the fire department is right down the street. We could meet, we could meet there, wherever. I guess they left. We could meet at the fire department well, and have them. The reason for the question, you know, look at the plan, yeah. and then we could talk. The reason to them for about the question was get to input, have some idea of, of how much impact there, how much of a neighborhood there is that's being impacted. Mm -hmm. Is it is it the three residents that we've well, seen only, on the letter, uh, or the three Mr. Bars and two other residents? Yeah, that's all. That's all the letter. That's all. I yes, and Liz has spoken not only to Mr. Bars numerous times and met with him, but also with another, gen at least one other gentleman. That's my understanding. Okay. So um, two out of those three people have been talked to, and w uh, you would hope that um, that gets communicated to the third person. And um, as we said, and as I said early on, way back in February, to start the dialogue um, and uh, you know open it up and. Um, uh, embrace and, and embrace the community a and they and they have a and again for the record I mean um, it is restricted um, and uh, you know uh, as you had said Liz and we we know that it's been before um, the mayor's office uh, his action group asking if they could purchase it but it's it's already restricted uh, hundreds of um, actually thousands of dollars has been um, to purchase the property so you know, we're, this was um, something that we thought was a win-win, um, and would hope that the, we embrace again the the neighbors. Um, if I may, how, <coughs> how many neighbors? Well, Mr. Barr's property is is on Henry Street. He faces, he's at the corner. No, of how many neighbors engaged in that oh, conversation? Two. That was his question. Two or, two two or three. three. Just two. Okay. If I may. Uh, a couple things. We, we had a number of neighbors that showed up at our council meeting. It was definitely more than three. Um, I had a chance to speak with them in the hallway. None of them want this project. I can tell you that. I mean, they're 100% against it. Um, the previous project that was supposed to go there was going to be one house for six a units. number of yeah. residents. Newbridge had six units, one house. Right. But the um, house was actually bigger than... Yes. Any of those. Yeah. I mean, I just want to state for the record that, you know, I, I think you guys have a great organization and everything, but I, I am very familiar with that neighborhood. 
And me personally, I do not feel that that is the right neighborhood for this type of project. 28 parking spots, you're talking about a regular neighborhood that's, you're gonna cram that many units into a neighborhood like that. I can tell you right now, I don't think you're gonna get the, the neighbors to want that whatsoever. Just in, in speaking to them, in speaking to residents that I've spoken to, I'm very familiar with that area. I don't think you're going to get any uh, anybody to agree to what you want to do there with this. I think, you know, they were satisfied with what was previously going to be put there. But um, just in that area, it's a regular neighborhood. Now you want to put that in a regular neighborhood. I just, I just don't see the neighbors going for that at all. Um, well, I, I spoke with two of the neighbors, but they, um, Mr. Bears did say that, and also in his letter, that they spoke to all of the neighbors in that neighborhood. I don't know how many people that are. I spoke to the two that are in front. The one very large house is um, on the other corner. Um, yes, and I spoke to Mr. Bears. And basically, especially with Mr. Bears um, and, and the other neighbor, but they aren't going to be happy with anything. They were well. They were happy with the previous, they, the one house with the six bedrooms. They were satisfied with that. But now you're talking 28 parking spots. You're talking a lot of traffic going into a little area there for a neighborhood. And that's a dead end street, right? Mm -hmm. but yeah, this yeah. lot is at the end. And yeah, I'm looking at it on Google Maps. It's um, Mrs. Corsi, yes. you mentioned that you have purchased a, a home in Lake Hiawatha. Have you considered? We have many homes in Lake Hiawatha that are in foreclosure in the lower section. Would you contemplate possibly purchasing some of those homes uh, um, under we these actually, same circumstances? We've had a contract with Persephone since 2012, and it was for two units for $150,000. Since that time, we've not been able to find <coughs> a single property that we could get at least two units on that would be reasonably priced for us to acquire and renovate. So the reason this project actually came to our attention is because I had been following up with Ellen on a regular basis just to see if there was any municipally owned properties or anything else that we could assist with to fulfill that contract, um, which were for two units. And there just isn't anything priced that we could afford. And then our resources, one, you've already spent money on this property mm -hmm. for housing. Yes. And then we would have to go to 10 different sites to build or rehab different homes, enter into contracts, do due diligence on all of those properties. It's just not, it wouldn't be cost effective for us to do that. Does but we're open, you know, we're open to do any projects, but this one was actually, we were invited in for this one. Does it have to be this dense? Uh, no, it doesn't have to be this dense. We actually presented three different concepts. I believe one was for seven or eight single family homes. There was this one for 12. It was actually two sixplexes when we presented it. And I think we presented one that may have been um, 25 units. Whoa. Which we immediately, you know. Yes, said. discarded, yes. And again, um, uh, it's still a work, you know, still a work in progress. And, right. um, you know, I and had um, spoken to our attorney with regard to this because I happen to be also at the meeting and I do listen uh, to neighbors and um, we, we communicated that. I communicated that as you have stated long ago, which was February, um, because um, although um, we're talking that um, they were for the uh, six, um, uh, I don't think Mr. Barr was ever for any development there, to be honest with you, um, because I've spoken to him, I've spoken to, he's spoken to the mayor's office. He wants it to be a, you know, a either bird sanctuary or, or whatever. However, it's already zoned for the housing, and it was under that other, under the other auspices. What, one of the things that maybe the council is not aware of, or the, uh, the residents that are here, is that the reason why Newbridge couldn't follow through on it is not because of the building per se, but the, 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 um, the, the people that would, M Matheny was one of the, the first groups that they brought in to actually um, live in the, in the, in the, uh, the units, the six units, um, and Matheny fell through. Then they went with another um, entity such as that that would stay on the property, and that fell through, and then the third one fell through it, and it, and it just um, was that um, it initially started that uh, Mr. Barr's concern was the, the uh, removal, the teardown of the house 
So that's how that, you know, that's how the progression. So um, we said I c we cannot spend money to tear down the house and spend more COA money without having a co uh, some place that would accept it. Habitat came forth. We we worked it. We worked out an arrangement. Um, it was presented by, as I said, in uh, in our COA presentation. We would not have gone forward if we did not present it to council in the sense of the fact that we were going to move from the the um, the failed three. And it was a couple of years that you know that it went was failed that we thought we had a, a resolve of. Um, not um, you know having money that was spent that would never be recouped and nothing else could be put there because of the the zoning so a uh, habitat came forward you know we worked it out however I will end it with saying that you know maybe there's always room for compromise there's always room to do the best we can and maybe 12 units may be uh, just too much and um, that we you know uh, take another take another look at it however in the spending plan based on presentation and not under a bushel basket but in the open it went from six to twelve units it was uh, stated on uh, August 10th it was then approved on September 19th and moving forward you know we we um, made sure that um, the public as well as the mayor